Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to Tahoe National Forest in Sierra County, California. Near the little town of Comptonville are rolling forests of four kinds of pine, two types of fir, Sierra juniper, incense cedar, and quaking aspen trees. This area is a montane climate characterized by a cool, wet higher country and drier, more arid lower elevations. In the morning of October 12, 2009, 83-year-old Orville Sanders was up bear hunting with three of his friends. Orville stood at six feet tall and was husky, healthy, and strong for his age. He'd been hunting black bears since he was 12 years old, and the rigorous activity helped him stay fit physically and mentally. Orville and his friends would utilize hounds to pursue black bears, and the pursuit would end in the bear escaping or climbing into a tree to avoid the baying hounds. Most hunts would consist of hounds pursuing the bear for two or three hours, and Orville enjoyed hearing them bay as they trailed the scent of the bears. The hunters didn't always kill a bear when they treed one. Only after examining the bear did the hunters decide if they wanted the meat and the pelt did they kill one. They never killed a bear and left it, though, as they were ethical hunters and demonstrated appreciation and respect for their hunting traditions. Along with Orville were his longtime friends, Charlie Brown and Ron Boyd. His friends would come in very important in today's episode. The bear hunters had turned the hounds out on a scent trail earlier in the morning and had listened as the hounds bayed as they pursued the bear for almost an hour. Once a bear climbs a tree, the hounds baying turns into howling, and that is the signal for the men to pull their hounds off the trail. At that point, they will either let the bear go, or they'll shoot it and claim its carcass and place their tag on it. As the hunters made their way toward the bear, they carried hunting rifles, and no source indicated that they had brought bear spray along with them. Once they arrived where the hounds were, they were surprised to see three black bears in the same tree. They examined the bears to see if they wanted to shoot any of them. This season, the hounds had treed 18 bears, and these three brought the total to 21. All prior bears treed had been passed on by the hunters. They were either too small or had an uninteresting color pattern, but one of the bears treed today was a little different. It was a big bear in brown, which is known as a cinnamon bear. One of the hunters decided he would take it. He raised his rifle and shot the bear while it was poised in the tree limbs. Now Orville knew better than to stand too close to a treed bear. At this point, the bears had been pursued over miles of rough terrain. They would likely be exhausted and in a bad mood due to being chased by the hounds. As Orville stood about 50 feet from the tree, his friend fired his rifle and shot the bear in the chest. The impact of the bullet knocked the bear off balance, and it tumbled to the ground. Half expecting the bear to be dead, Orville was surprised to see it spring back and immediately dash toward him. As it approached him, it stood on its hind legs, popping its jaws as its paws reached toward the man. Seeing the bear closing in on Orville, Boyd fired and hit the bear two times, but the wounded bear continued to focus on his hunting partner. Orville didn't have time to react to the angry bear, and held his rifle between them as a sort of shield. The bear bit down on Orville's rifle and right through his hand holding it. It shook its head and clamped its jaws onto his left forearm. As the massive angry black bear tore gashes into Orville's forearm, he jammed his thumb into its ears and twisted. He was hoping to irritate the bear into releasing his forearm from its jaws, but was tossed around as the bear tried to tear off his arm. That's when Charlie joined the fight by putting the boot to the bear. He kicked the bear several times and successfully distracted the bear from killing Orville, but now it focused its anger on him. Before Charlie could escape, the bear bit onto his leg and began pulling him toward its mouth with its paws. Orville didn't want to shoot Charlie, so he threw his rifle to him instead. Given he was now being tossed around by the bear, Charlie missed the catch and dropped the rifle nearby. He bent over and picked it up while he was being shaken back and forth to try to defend himself. The man turned the rifle toward the bear and fired, striking the bear in the neck. With four bullet holes punched in its vitals, the bear slowly lost its energy and died. With the bear no longer a threat, the hunters turned to examining Orville's injuries. His left forearm was a bloody mess. 
as the men tied a handkerchief around it. They could see Orville's wrist bones, now barren of skin. Blood poured out of Orville's wrist due to arteries being severed. Now aware of how severe Orville's injuries were, they knew he'd need immediate medical attention. They helped him into Boyd's pickup and piled in alongside their friend. Beating way too fast on the winding mountain roads, they headed toward Camptonville. Along their way, the hunters ran into a California Department of Fish and Game ranger. They called for a medical helicopter to fly Orville to Sutter Roseville Medical Center in Roseville, California. Afterward, Orville remembered being placed in the truck one moment and waking up in the hospital the next. The medical team at the hospital indicated that Orville had lost four pints of blood, which was almost half of the average person's volume of ten pints. Doctors told him that he would have died from blood loss in an hour if he hadn't made it to the hospital. The medical staff cleaned Orville's wounds for two hours and did their best to cover his exposed forearm bones. They determined that his forearm was broken in four places, which required surgery for repair. They also discovered a bite to his right arm, which he wasn't aware of. He also received rabies vaccinations, just in case the bear had the disease. While he was at the hospital, fishing game rangers interviewed him about the details of the attack. Orville found out that the bear weighed just under 200 pounds. Its head was taken for rabies examination, which proved to be negative. Following this bear attack, Orville indicated that he would not stop hound hunting for bears. His left thumb is left stiff permanently, preventing him from carrying a rifle, but he can still listen to the hounds. In California, bear hunting season begins in October and runs until the allotted number of bears are killed. The state issues 1,700 permits and usually harvests, usually hunters harvest about one-third of the allotted numbers of bears each year. As for his hunting partners, seeing their friend mauled by an angry black bear did nothing to quell their desire to hunt bears. They took the hounds out for a hunt the following Wednesday, still hoping to fill their tags. After reviewing the details of Orville's attack, I have a few questions for you. Do you think bear spray would have stopped this angry and wounded bear from attacking Orville? Why do you think Orville didn't shoot the bear as it closed in on him? What are your thoughts about hound hunting for black bears? Did an era of tough bear hunters end when Orville passed away a few years ago? All I can say is that I hope I can still do what I enjoy into my 80s. I'll gladly read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.